Uh, thank you very much. Let me just first begin by congratulating, like my the other speakers, uh, the Sibet Authority for its 20th anniversary. Uh, well done. A milestone has been reached, and um, in this in Jamaica, and particularly with respect to the Sibet Authority, a very important international organisation. In this context, therefore, I am very pleased to contribute to the side event and the first question. Indeed, our first question is how can we meet the capacity needs of developing states in regards to activities in the area? Well, I will respond to this by saying in answering this first question that the starting point is to acknowledge the establishment of the International Seabed Authority itself in 1994 is a very concrete result of the call to protect our oceans, that remembering that there is only one ocean that we must manage and manage it sustainably for the future of humanity. In the intervening years, of course, since the establishment of the International Seabed Authority, ESA has the, you know, the, the Seabed Authority has dedicated its work to develop stringent and very effective rules for the resources that are found in the area, and in particular, to help balance the conservation and the sustainable use, and to do so uh, while, of course, enabling extraction to begin. I would like particularly to emphasize that this planned approach is not evident in many other mar maritime sectors. The second point that I'd like to highlight is the acknowledgement that our ocean is at a very critical stage today, and particularly small island states and developing countries, they are very, very vulnerable to the changes that we are seeing taking place with respect to climate change. And in this regard, the work of the C International Seabed Authority in capacity building is what I consider to be a very important part of the global collective effort for the protection and the conservation of our common ocean in order to achieve the UN SDGs, including in particular, of course, goal 14 on the conservation and the sustainable use of the oceans, our seas and our marine resources. In delivering the 2030 Agenda, this will lead us to a fair and equitable future for all countries, all nations and all peoples. There are two aspects which are the backbone for delivering capacity building activities that would meet the needs of developing countries and in the context of ocean governance and particularly the areas beyond national jurisdiction. First of all, how to identify the capacity that is needed and at the same time to design the capacity development activities that will help respond to the needs of these countries. In order to promote ocean governance beyond national jurisdiction, as well as within national jurisdiction, we definitely need capacity. We need material capacity, and we need a system that would support both of these elements. And here, we will also need to recognize that each country, each region, might have very specific capacity building needs and that are very different from one country to another. The second point I would make on this, uh, in this respect is the need to provide, and the question is how are we going to do so, how are we going to provide sustainable financial support in order to guarantee the delivery of these capacity development activities. And therefore this brings me to identifying two very successful examples that could be relevant in this respect. The first is ISA itself. It has established a unique and, in my view, a very mature capacity building program to carry out its responsibilities under Article 43 of the UNCLOS Convention, as well as Article 143 and 144, in order to promote scientific research in the area and to encourage capacity uh, building of developing countries in the deep sea research as well as technology. The three programs that ESA has put in place 
the, uh, the ESA Contractors Training Program, the Endowment Fund, and the ESA Internship Program. The second one is the importance that capacity building plays uh, in terms of the mission of the World Maritime University. Um, it is a very important aspect of all our daily work, and over the last 36 years since the university was established, the World Maritime University, uh, we have delivered world-class postgraduate education, research, and capacity building to empower the current and the future leaders who will become, for us, the stewards of the sea and would help manage our ocean sustainably. One of our seven Master of Science specializations at our camp, main campus in Malmo in Sweden is dedicated to ocean sustainability, governance, and management. And this particular program is designed for those who work in the maritime and ocean sectors, and it offers an ecosystem-based approach to the governance and the management of the interconnected global ocean and the socio-ecological system. We are proud to say that to date, WMU has had 5,167 graduates from 170 countries. And our alumni have all returned home to their respective countries to make a contribution to maritime and ocean sectors. And there in particular, I consider them uh, those who have gone back at the front and therefore occupying themselves and being at the front line working to deliver on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. I say this with confidence that both the International Seabed Authority and our university, the World Maritime University, we stand ready to play our part in supporting research, education and capacity building in support of meeting the needs of developing countries and in particular with respect to ocean governance. Thank you, Dr. Dumbia Henry. And our second question to you is, how can capacity building initiatives help to address the gap in new and emerging ocean industries? In framing and answering this question, this, it is important to bear in mind that the key enabler in taking action at all levels to protect and preserve our common ocean is to have qualified human resources. We are all here. These are human resources. In this respect, we are looking, therefore, to SDG 4, which is education, to ensure inclusive, equitable, quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. A key strand in building human resources through capacity building, very much let us remember that, is to empower women. Everyone knows that the implementation of SDG 5, which is the gender SDG, is to achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls. And this requires educational, capacity building and research in order to promote equality and to empower women. This theme, it speaks to the need for full and effective participation and equal opportunities at all levels of decision making, whether in political, economic, or business or public life. Therefore, together with ESA, and our, we are making a very significant effort to promote the role of women in maritime and ocean sectors. ESA has registered a voluntary commitment in 2017 at the Ocean Conference, enhancing the role of women and the mar marine scientific research through capacity building. Since 2009, based on the information available, 259 training placements have been made. All three Seabed Authority capacity building programs, 107 or 41 percent of these placements have been women. And I have also learned that all colleagues at the Seabed Authority will deepen the effectiveness and impact of the capacity development work by proactively seeking to enhance the role of women in maritime and research. With this, in this respect, the World Maritime University is doing its share to empower women through education and capacity building. And among our 5,167 graduates to date, 1,110 of them, 21% are women. 
This is a very significant achievement in maritime and ocean sectors. In 1983, when the university was established, we only saw 3% of women students graduating with their master's degree in maritime and ocean affairs. I am very pleased to say that today we are proud that the thir a third of our graduates in the class of 2019, they just graduated two, two weeks ago in Malmo, are women. And we have achieved gender parity in our program in China. We have a very specialized program in China with gender parity, 50-50, in that particular Masters of Science program. Let me conclude by thanking you for inviting me to be present here with you today. I could only say that we stand at a transformative time in human history, where our own existence is met by unprecedented challenges today. In my view, it is more critical than ever before that we understand our relationship with the ocean, that we anticipate the future challenges ahead, and that we identify together solutions and mitigation measures that will help us build on the success of the past. And in this context, in responding to the future challenges, it is important to point out that WMU is committed to work with all our partners, including with the International Seabed Authority, to undertake research in the field of ocean sustainability and ocean governance, and to implement the United Nations SDGs, providing education and capacity building to the leaders and professionals of today and tomorrow, and in particular, to focus on strengthening the role of women in the maritime and ocean sectors. Thank you very much.